over to you, Judith. Thank you very much for joining me. What a lovely day it is here. I understand it's not always lovely with you and that's because I've got nice sunny weather. So thank you very much for sending it to the UK. I appreciate it. But it is turning into fall or autumn here. So I thought it, what a perfect time to paint some leaves. And the metallic colors in the Derwent Metallic Paint Pan set are absolutely perfect for doing this. The metallic paint pan set came out last year or the year before. It's very hard to remember with lockdown because the days just became and they rolled into one. So I've created a picture for you. Now, if you haven't got fall leaves yet, that's okay. You don't always have to draw and paint from life. There are always clip art images you can get from online. Free stock images. They're always available. Just put into your normal search engine or Google. Fall leaves. There are so many that you can download. Lots of different ones. Or you can go out into the garden, go for a walk, get some fresh air and start collecting them. Now, on your list, in your kit list, you had some paper. I've drawn some images out, but we can draw some together. All I want you to do is just take an image of a leaf, or if you've got a leaf, or from your mind. Now, leaves are really easy to draw. Let's draw one together. With your leaves on your trees, the first thing to remember so I always use a 2H pencil. Reason why I use H pencils when I'm painting is you don't want to have too much graphite on your paper. If you start to use the B ranges in pencils when you're using paint, it starts to smudge a little bit. So I tend to use the H's. Don't worry if you haven't got an H, it's fine for today. It's just a little tip and trick I do use. But let's start with the stalk. Let's draw a stalk together. Now you may have already drawn your leaves and that's fine, but if you haven't, we can draw a leaf together. They're always symmetrical or semi-symmetrical leaves. So they always come out from the stalk. And then they come back in. No leaf in nature is perfect. When it uncurls, they tend to break. They tend to snap. But what we draw on one side, we draw on the other. They grow outwards, almost like a circle. So what you can do sometimes to make it easier is draw yourself a very faint oval or circle. And we can draw within that. So let's draw the next point. And you can draw it to the edge of the circle. Because we can erase those edges later. Leaves are super easy to draw. Let's come in and go back out to the edge of our circle. Make some of your indentations bigger than the other. And just keep going round. Now everything goes through what I call an ugly stage. Everything does. Being an artist, I can get super stroppy. And I had to remove the bin from my studio because everything goes through an ugly stage. 
I was throwing everything away. So I had to remove my bin from the studio. What I want you to do is ignore that ugly stage. Have faith that you can draw, everybody can draw. Just sometimes it takes longer to get used to it than others. It takes practice and you should just practice every day, even if it's only for five minutes, just practice every day because everything goes through this ugly stage. And that's why I had to throw my, I had to throw my bin away in the studio because I was just throwing everything away. Then you can draw your veins in. If you have one vein there, we mirror that vein on the other side. Then it has small veins. And you can see it's not hard to draw a leaf at all. Then once you're happy with the shape, you can remove the outer faint circle you drew. And then you can see it comes out of this ugly stage that it goes through. I love these erasers. These are pencil erasers and they have a little brush on the end. They are fantastic. It's a soft brush and you just brush your pencil erasings away. And what it means is you're not smudging the graphite with your hand. They are fantastic little erasers. You just sharpen them with your regular pencil sharpener. They are always in my pencil case. They're perfect for art classes, for school, for college, or just to have at home. They're brilliant little tools. Let's draw one of these leaves before we start painting. Because these ones, what we do is we can lift the paint out. So these ones are particularly good to do. I'm just going to move my paper over slightly to make sure it's in camera. Okay, with these ones, let's draw the vein in first. Curve your line slightly. We curve it to make it look more natural. If you just do straight lines, sometimes they can look a little false. Okay, now sometimes it's better to have more on the bottom than on the top to make it look natural. We're going to go from the tip here, curve it round, to there. How did I get a straight line, a curve, without it becoming jolty? I kept the, this side of my hand on the paper. Little drawing tip for you. It's easier to get a sweep of the line if you keep your hand on the paper. The same with underneath. We're going to do this curve here. I keep my hand on the paper. If I lift my hand up, your hand starts to shake and that's when you get to jaggedy line. So keep your hand on the paper and just sweep it round. Then you can put in your veins. If it's on one side, it's on the other. So we've got two leaves and we can paint these two leaves. If you've got some time while I'm talking about metallic paints, do some, draw some other leaves in. For example, in this picture, we've got some that are like chestnut leaves and in the UK, we have walnut leaves. So do, while I'm talking about metallic paints to you and talking through how to use them, do sketch some more leaves in. I'll turn this over to give you an idea of some shapes that you can copy. The metallic paint pan set comes in beautiful packaging. One of the reasons why I like this is I teach over a hundred students a week. 
And a lot of those students, they're not just women now. A lot of men are doing art, and I hope we've got some men with us today. Now, a lot of packaging over the years has been geared at ladies. This packaging, as you can see, is both genders. And it's great that people have finally got gifts that they can give their husbands, their sons, their uncles, you know, the men in their life. It's great because they're not embarrassed to take it out with them. All the paint pan sets are the same. If you're taking it to an art group, what you can do is just with a laundry marker or a permanent marker, you can write on the corner metallics. So if you're grabbing it in a rush, you know which set you're grabbing. Now my set is a much loved set. When they're like this, this is when they are at their best. Metallic paints work best when they are like a much loved pair of shoes. Because when they come out the factory, they are sliced. Okay, let me show you a brand new set. When they come out the factory, this is how you will receive your paints. They are sliced and they are almost polished. This is because they are sliced very quickly at a high temperature. You need to break through them. They are, need to be used like a much loved pair of shoes. And the way you do that is you squeeze your water brush. These water brushes that come with your set, they simply fill with water in this barrel and you screw them together. Give a little squeeze to release excess water. Now there's a valve in here. That means when you're painting, you don't need to squeeze. However, when you're first using your paints, squeeze a little bit more water than you normally would. Because what I want you to do is, I want you to break through this polished layer. So what you're going to get is a gooey layer of paint. It should look almost like glycerin, like thick paint. So you can see the difference. Now, if you don't do that, what do you get instead? Let me clean the brush off so you can see a brand new set when you don't do that. If you don't do that, you can see it just slides across the top. It's a lot different and that's because it's been sliced. So what I want you to do is squeeze it and really break through just like a brand new pair of shoes. I want you to wear it in. That's really important with these metallic paints. That's when they work best is when you break them in like a pair of shoes. Now the metallic paints come in a set of 12 colors. However, you haven't just got 12 colors. Metallic paints don't normally mix to create new colors. The Derwent metallic paints are different than anything, any other paints on the market because you can make about 20 different shades and that's what's different about them. Normally the metallic pigments are so heavy, they, they, they become too dominant and they bottom out and they just sink. With the metallic pigments with Derwent, they do mix to be, create different shades. They mix to create rose golds and with copper colors. So they're lovely to play with and you have many more colors in your set than you realize you get a little color chart. Do keep this, it's really handy, especially when you're out and about or if you're at home sitting there watching television or if you drop them, which I have done and you're not sure whereabouts they go back, it does happen. As you see, I've dropped these and I've put them back in the wrong order. So it does happen. You can replace these little cubes separately and that's one thing to remember is you can take these out. So if you use one more than the other, I always use this sunset more than others. So when that's run out, I can replace that little one. Now, what hey, Judith, you can... we're yes. getting a few questions about intense and if it is technically a watercolor or what makes it different than watercolor. Yeah, absolutely. With intense, it's not watercolor because it doesn't have gum arabic in. 
So it's so much easier to use. Technically, it's not actually ink. It creates an ink-like stain, okay? But it's not watercolor because it doesn't have gamaric in. It's dried ink-like formula with, it does actually have a soluble wax. So when it dries, it becomes permanent. The trick with ink tents is you have to let it dry in layers. If you put it on too thick, it will still move. So you paint with it in light layers, you let it dry. And if you want to build up the vibrancy, you do another layer. It doesn't create hard edges like watercolor. So I teach watercolor lessons every week and it doesn't create cauliflowers. You don't get hard edges, but the one difference is you can't lift you can't lift it out. So with watercolor, you can lift it out, you can remove it, you can wet it, and you can lay either you know, a piece of tissue over and you can lift the pigment back out. You can't do that with ink tents, but you can build it up in permanent layers. You don't get cauliflowers, you don't get those hard edges, so it's much easier to use, far easier to use because it doesn't have gum arabic in. If I have somebody starting watercolor classes, I always give them ink tents first to use because it's so much easier. Metallic paints don't have gum arabic in. So again, they're far easier to use. However, they're not permanent. They are pigment, but they're not permanent. So you can lift them out. They're very much like painting with watercolor, but they don't have gum arabic in. So you don't get cauliflowers and all the nasty, horrible things that makes watercolor tricky to use. They like painting with watercolor, but they're much easier. So what I've done here is I've created a wash in the palette lid. So you have five wells in your palette. I've created a blue one. I'm now gonna make a green one next to it. With watercolor, you can only make about two or three color mixes and it starts to go muddy. With the Derwent products, because it doesn't have gum out of a picker in, you can mix it and mix it and mix it. You can mix two, three colors. With Inktense, I can make 120 colors and keep going. In fact, it just broke me because I just kept going with this color chart and I could have kept going and kept going. And in the end, I just gave up with it because I got to 120 colors and it, it beat me. With the metallics, the metal pigments only go on for so long, but I got to 20 colors, which you don't normally do. We're going to make a wash. Now you don't need to wet the paper first. So with watercolor, you normally need to wet the area first. We don't need to do this. We can pick up our green and with our little water brush, you don't need to squeeze it, remember? I'm just gonna keep this steady so you don't get camera shake. You Judith, just... are all metallic paints the same? If one of, one of our listeners has a set by Arteza, no, they're not. I've played with lots and lots of metallic paints. I've played with the Arteza ones and they're not the same at all. I would say the Arteza ones actually do have gum arabic in because I got cauliflowers with them. Um, there are some Japanese ones. They are very, very nice to use, but I couldn't mix more colors with them. I couldn't layer. Some have dyes in them and not pigments. They're all very different to use. Some are more craft-based and some are more art-based. Some are more acrylic paint-based rather than watercolor-based. It's very much what you prefer to use and your style. It's definitely worth playing with. But the Arteza ones, I would definitely say have gum arabic in them because I did get cauliflowers with them. Okay, so you can literally paint away as quick as you like, because when it dries, and it will look patchy, don't worry about that. 
because just with ink tents, because it's pigment, not dye, Derwent no longer use dyes. The reason why Derwent don't use dyes, Derwent aim to make as much of their products as light fast as they possibly can. Dyes are not light fast. Pigments are light fast. You may think, what does light fast mean? Light fast means they do not fade in daylight conditions. We're not going to say museum conditions because we wouldn't use metallic paints in museum conditions. But in normal daylight conditions, they're not going to fade. You wouldn't want to put hours and hours into your artwork or even, you know, you wouldn't want to put the effort into making something for somebody. And then two hours later, which actually can happen, it for to disappear. So Derwent only use pigments, not dyes. You can then go straight in. You don't need to wait for this to dry. You can then go straight it back into your green, squeeze your brush a little. It is really as a little, and you can drop in some more paint around the edges. Now you'll notice in your palette, there's a little yellow sponge. Don't do what I did and throw it away. I had a really silly moment when I got my first paint set. It's to clean your brush on. I had a really sick moment when I got my first one. I thought it was packing material because it was to put a block in or something. It's to clean your brush on. It's the most ingenious thing you've ever, ever used. It grips the paint off your brush and it cleans it. And it's the best thing. I thought it was packing material and I threw it away and I had to phone the factory to replace it. And I felt an absolute buffoon. All it is, is you literally wipe your brush on it. It grabs the paint off the filaments off your brush. And it means you don't have to take all cleaning materials with you. And you can literally just pick up the paint and just keep dropping it in. Go over your veins. Pick up some wash and just smooth it out. And you can use the flat of your brush. So use the filaments in your brush, just on this side, just to smooth it out. The body of your brush. So if you want to make it darker, pick it up and use the very tip. So you're dropping it in. And then when you want to smooth it out, use the body of your brush. And that's how it releases the water. Is pressure sensitive. So by using the tip, you're not engaging the pressure valve. You only engage the pressure valve when you push down with the fat part of the brush. Judith, when you clean the sponge, do you squeeze the water to release the paint or no, just dry wipe it? literally just wipe it across the sponge. The sponge will stain. It never goes back to how it was. The reason being is because it's so pigmented. There's so much color in these paints. It dyes the sponge. It never goes back to how it was. All you need to do is take it out of here, run it under the sink with some dish soap and pop it back. It never goes back to being totally clean because it's got so much pigment in it. But it's, it will be clean, it's just stained. Same with the fibres of the brush. When you first get it, they are snow white. They are lovely and clean and white. And then you use them and they stain. And they never go back to being white. They are clean, but they just never go back to being white because they're stained with pigment. So just make it dark on these corners. Now with metallic paints, if you use them on black paper, they shine. If you use them on white paper, they shimmer. 
Some colours are shinier than others, as you saw when we first came on. The gold is particularly shiny, especially the rose gold. The blues shimmer more, so you can play with those and you can use them on black paper as well. Really nice for things like Christmas cards and gifts, making your own wrapping paper. So just along these lines, just remember to use the very tip of your brush. So you only need to ever use one brush. It's not like with watercolor where you've got to take lots and lots of brushes everywhere. Just get used to using one brush in different ways. And you can mix colors, so you can pick up some of the blue and just paint it straight in. What type of paper are you currently using? This is Strathmore Smooth. Bristol Smooth. Metallics particularly like smooth paper. anything smooth or even a crafting paper. They particularly love anything smooth. And even with black paper, as long as it's smooth, they really shine on it. Metallics dry very, very quick, but you can re-wet them because they're not ink tents. Now, if this was ink tents, you couldn't re-wet it. So for example, if I wanted to lift that out a bit, I could lift it out, get a bit of tissue, and I can lift that. You can't do that with ink tents, not at all. Because ink tents is pigment that dyes the paper, is an ink-like stain. Now you can mix ink tents and metallic paints, they work and play very nicely together. All Derwent's products play nicely together. All you need to do is use your ink tents first and your metallics afterwards. So let's do a gold one because the gold is very, very shiny. Now with gold, literally just take it straight from the palette, mix them into a bit, one of the little wells. You don't need to use a lot at all. But let's mix some colors. It's a little pale. So I'm going to take some of the sunset and pop it in. So you can actually mix the colors in the palette. We got a question about layering and if you could place another color on top of the color you use first and when would be best to do that to wait till it dries or when it's wet? Well, if you think about it, we put the blue over the green here. But yes, we can do, we'll do it with this one if you like, so we can see. Now I normally let it to have almost dried at least, or dried, it depends if you want to really blend it in, or if you feel confident with blending over, but we'll do it with this one. So if we're going to put a layer of, a base layer in a foundation layer of, we've got a, a light gold and we've added some sunset just to pick it up a bit. And we're going to do a layer. Now I'm not doing a thick layer, so it's going to dry very quickly anyway. There's almost honey in these, almost like a layer of glycerin, a mix in these paints, and that helps it dry. Now on my paper, and you can just see in the light, it's starting to sparkle. I particularly like the silvers and the golds in this set. If you use it very, very thick, you can use them like thick gold acrylic paint and you can use these for hand lettering.
I haven't found a limit to how many times you can layer these. They don't lift back off like that. I haven't had any disasters yet. But then I never use very cheap paper. I don't use lower quality paper. I always use you know, quite a standard weight paper. I never use anything less than 150 GSM because I don't like stretching paper really. I don't have time in my life for stretching paper. What stretching is, is when you put it across a board with tape to stop it going wobbly. I don't have time for that. And I'm sure most people don't have time in their busy schedules to start stretching paper. They, so you want to make sure your paper is 150 GSM or around, if you can, 200 pounds in weight. Especially if you're making cards for people, you don't want to be giving a card to somebody and it being all wrinkly and wobbly. So here, we'd already painted, but it seems a bit pale. So I'm just gonna put another layer on top. Just seems a little bit pale. Now, as you can see, because it's got no gum arabic in, I can just paint straight over the top. Now, if I had watercolor and that had gum arabic in, you can't do that. There's no possible way you can paint straight over the top while that's still damp. It would have lifted it off. So another question about paper. Right now you're using the smooth with this metallic. Yeah. With other Derwent paint pan sets, would you still mm -hmm. use smooth or would it differ? No, I tend to use either Bristol vellum or a watercolor paper. So it depends on the set. With the ink tents paper, with the ink tents set, obviously you can use Derwent ink tents paper. But I also use a mixed media paper or a cold press watercolor paper. Inktense prefers a slightly textured paper. It doesn't particularly like a smooth paper. It goes terribly patchy. It's very unique Inktense in that it does like a slightly textured paper. It likes Strathmore Bristol Vellum very much. It loves it. Or you can use a a watercolour paper, but you don't want it too heavily textured, to be perfectly honest, but you definitely don't want it smooth. It can't stand smooth paper. If you're using pastel, the pastel paint set, that's quite unique in that it loves smooth paper. It loves the Derwent watercolour paper. And if you use that, you can erase on it, you can lift it off. If you don't use a smooth paper, you can't erase the pastel shades. It doesn't do some of the little tricks and little foibles, the pastel set. And that's the same with the new charcoal set as well. So we are taught with charcoals to use a textured paper. But the charcoal set is strangely a paint set. Now we don't normally paint with charcoals. So you have to have a different mindset and get out of the mindset that we use textured paper with charcoals because it doesn't work with textured paper. You need to use a smooth paper with the charcoal paint pan set. Something like the Derwent watercolor paper, the charcoal set absolutely adores it. If you use a smooth paper, it smudges, it shifts, it moves, it erases, it does the most amazing things. If you don't do that, it doesn't do it. And you can't move it and you can't smudge it. You can't shift it and you can't blend it. Yes, it gets lovely deep tones, but it doesn't do what charcoal does, which at the end of the day, if you're buying a charcoal set, that's what you want it to do. So with the charcoal set, you need to really use a paper that's smooth. Now, if you haven't got the Derwent watercolor paper, now I don't mean the ink tense paper. I mean the watercolor paper. I think it has an otter on the front or an animal, a, a colorful one. You can use Strathmore Smooth or something like that. It has to be very smooth to touch. No divots or wrinkles or 
little textures or bumps at all. Also, one of the tricks with the charcoal set is you must leave it dry before you smudge, otherwise it doesn't work. I'm trying to think what other paint sets we've got as well. What other paint sets have you got released in the US? Um, it is the pastel, metallic, graphic Graf tint, uh, lime and wash, which is just the normal ink tents. Yes, but you've got graphic tint in there. Graphic tint you can use on smooth and on textured. You can get really good results from both. You can play on both textured and smooth because it works on both. Graphic tint, the unique thing about graphic tint is it has a little, little foible that you can erase the graphite section of graphic tint, but once it's dry and the pigment will stay on the paper. And you can do that on either textured or smooth paper. It makes no difference. But what it does like is it likes a white paper. So a paper where it's more of a cream color than white, the, the subtle colors don't show up as much. So I tend to use the Bristol vellum for graphite tint because it's not a bleached paper, but it has more of a white base to it than a cream base. Now you can see I'm layering here. Now, if it starts to look stripy, so if, let me force some stripes. Here, it's starting to look patchy. What I want you to do is just keep pulling it down with the very tip of your brush, just manipulate it and stroke it. Almost love it a little bit, with just with the very tip of your brush. And you can layer and layer and layer. It almost is a bit gelatinous and that's good because with the very tip of your brush, you can just stroke that out and move it down and it smooths out. And you can see that it goes a lot darker. So I'm using the sunset orange here just to increase the depth. Now, once that's dry, I can do it again and again. And that's what I like about the metallics is they almost behave either like watercolor or they behave like acrylic. Judith, we know that this is permanent, permanent ink intense. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever had any trouble with washing it out of your brushes? It stains them. So I don't have trouble washing out the brushes because I, all I use with my brushes is regular dish soap. Um, I never use any detergent other than that. And then I run, wash them under the tap and then I always dry my brushes point down. So you have to go back to how you were always taught to dry your brushes. If you dry your brushes flat on a surface, what happens with any paint is it sticks in the ferrules of the brush here. So when you're taught at any school or art school, you are taught to dry your brushes here. So all you would do is you get with your water brush, a comes in two halves and you get a cap. So even though you've washed your brush, pop your cap on, and then dry it in a mug or a holder upside down because the cap is ventilated. It's ventilated for safety as a choke hazard. But what it means for you is the air still flows through and it dries so it doesn't go moldy or rotten. So when you've washed your brushes, they will stain. They will never ever go back. It's quite sad really. They never go back to that lovely pristine white that you get. So when you first get your brush, it's beautiful and white. It never goes back to that. You enjoy it when it's first new because you'll never see that brush like that again because it's got so much pigment in it. That's how your brush is going to end up looking. Even if you wash it and wash it and wash it, it's stained for life, it's dyed for life. But it doesn't mean it's not clean. So what you can do is get a piece of kitchen roll and just run it backwards and forwards and make sure that it comes off clean. 
and just dry it upside down. All brushes should always be dried upside down. So you can see we've added three layers there and I could keep going. So once that dry, I could add another layer and another layer and another layer because they behave very much like acrylic. So once that's dry, we can put in the, the veins. I'm just gonna let that go off a little bit because I want to show you, let's move over here a little bit, the purples. Now we've got, we've got 15 minutes left. So I want to show you what you can do is by lifting off the purples. Now I said to you before, we don't need to wet the paper first. However, if you wet the paper first, now we also do with Derwent push button water brushes. So if you find these ones too small for your hands, because sometimes, you know, if you're at home and you're able to have a bigger water brush, they do push button water brushes. And these are the ones I quite often use at home. They have a bigger reservoir for water. They are a little bit more comfortable to hold. They also mean that if you want to do a wash, you can push this button, it overrides the valve, so you don't have to squeeze the brush. You just push the button and it lets out a little bit more water. I do particularly like these brushes. I have a lot more control with the push button water brushes than I do with the ones that come in the set. There's nothing wrong with the ones that come in the set. Just these are a little bit better quality and I have a lot more control with them because I can control how much water comes out just by a little tiny push on this button. And the end is a little bit narrower. They come in, I think, four or five sizes, but they, there's just that little bit more control. What we're going to do here is we're going to paint into the wet leaf break through this shiny bit on top of the pan set. Generally, like I said, like break through your pair of shoes and you'll see the paint start bleeding in to the water. And then pick up a different color. So we're going to actually mix the paints into the water on the paper and we're going to let them bleed through very autumnly. And you can do this with purples and pinks. And we're just going to flick it in and you get more of a more artistic and let them bleed, let them walk into each other. Don't manipulate it too much because you'll lose that lovely moment the colors merge. Make sure this is still wet this side and we're going to do the same. We're going to pick up some gold. Just lay it down. Now the very, very metallics don't merge as well. I think the glitter particles grip a little bit too much the pinks, you can see it move. The pinks love wet on wet. So this is a wet on wet technique. And the pinks absolutely love walking into each other. If it starts to go dry with these water brushes, you simply give it a little bit of a squeeze. Just squeeze the button ever so gently. But what you don't want to do is over manipulate it because it will, you'll just lose that moment where they bleed. Okay, so whilst that's drying a little bit, I want to go back to these veins. It's dry now, we could do another layer on that quite easily. We need to pick up a darker color. So we're going to layer over the top with a darker color. So what color could we pick out? We could pick out this red. 
in the palette. This is so dry now, I can lean on it. Normally with watercolor, there's absolutely no way I could do that. So this brush lets the, the required amount of water out itself. It's got a valve in it. I don't have to do anything other than paint. For a fine line, I hardly put any pressure on. They do really thin ones. They do do really fine ones in the set, but I'm a bit of a lazy painter and I tend to just stick to one brush. Remember, if it's on one side, it has to be on the other. Then just put in some smaller ones coming off. And then just clean, clean your brush off on the sponge. Make sure you've got a tissue in your hand and that your brush is clean. And with a wet brush, just start lifting it out. If you keep dragging your brush over, it will lift out a vein. But you have to get it whilst it's still damp. And then wipe your brush off on your tissue. Just about see it on camera. So pull your damp brush over the paper and then wipe it. Pull it over the paper and then wipe it. So what you're doing is you're lifting the paint back out. You can't do that with ink tents. So you're subtracting it. And then with a the darker color, we're going to put in the vein. Now we're going to mix some of the pink and then we're going to darken it with the purple because we need to get a really dark color for this vein. Judith, we have about 10 minutes left. Just wanted to let you Brilliant. know. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, so it's going to bleed. So we're going to leave that for a minute. Just do that dark. See, it's going to bleed because it's so wet. So we're just going to leave that. Now around this green, it's too flat. There's just no sparkle in this at all. It's dry, really flat. That sometimes happens with metallic. And what it is, is there's so much color in these. Not every color goes sparkly on white paper, but we know the silver is super sparkly. So what we can do is we can put some silver just on some points around the edges. Then we're going to soften those points up. We're not going to leave it ugly around the edges. We'll paint it in and then we're going to soften it. So when the light shines, it will pick up on the silver. It's just at this moment, now it's dried, it's way too flat. And that can happen. It's because we're painting on white paper. If that was black paper, it would be really, really shiny. But on white paper, sometimes it just sparkles. But we know that the gold paint and the silver paint is always shiny. Okay, so we've got them on the corner, but we now need to soften that. So just with a clean brush, just use the point and just soften the join. Now you can always use your metallic pencils with paint. You have to wait until they're dry because the new metallic pencils are not water soluble. They used to be, they are no longer water soluble. So you do have to make sure you paint and then you let it dry. And you can use your metallic pencils with metallic paint as well. 
to just go around the edges. Use your brush just to soften the join. And you can go back with your green, because don't forget, they mix really nicely and they will fade. When they dry, they dry two shades lighter. So when we first painted this, it painted very, very dark. It painted this color. Then when it dries, it dries that color. So you do have to paint with it, with it in mind that it's going to fade to two shades lighter, just like you would with watercolor. So if you have any questions, just do fire them at Grace if there's anything you have thought of. There's no such thing as a silly question. That's my one rule. If you're, if you're thinking it, you can guarantee everybody else is thinking it. We did get a question about if you could use this paint pan to glaze over regular dry watercolor. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely you can. So you can use regular watercolor with this at the same time. You can also use it before it. What I have found is you can't use it after it. You have to either use it before or during. I don't know if it's the, the metallic particles, repel it, but you either have to mix it with it or use it before. But yes, absolutely, you can use it together. And what would you say is the biggest difference or learning difference between the pencils and the paints? And what would you recommend for an artist? If you are an artist that likes to be very, very precise, then pencils are for you because you can never quite predict what the paint is going to do. So if you're a precision worker, then keep with pencils. If you're an artist that likes to create and you don't mind what's going to come out and you like to experiment, then go with the paints because they are beautiful colors. As you can see, you can have so many more techniques with them than go with paints. I think it's a almost dry versus wet media argument with the paints and the pencils, with the metallics. And that's that level of control to the level of not being in control. And it's to that extreme because there's so many different techniques you can do with the paints, but the pencils can be quite restrictive. They mix, they blend, they're beautiful. They are almost very similar in feel to Derwin's Lightfast pencils to lay down. They are that smooth but there's only 20 in the range and they are lovely to use. I mean, they're beautiful quality pencils, but they're not as expressive as the paint and you can use them with the paint. So they're more limiting. So I definitely, if you can paint and if you're not worried about what comes out at the end, I'd go with the paints because you can always add the pencils after. But you can't paint on the pencil. In addition to these paints, what other Derwent products would you recommend for somebody who um, is just getting started with art or is more intermediate? Ink tents, ink tents all the way, because ink tents, you can do so much with it. Ink tents, you can use on fabric, you can use on paper, you can use on wood. It's forgiving. You can use it as a beginner, intermediate, advanced. You can use it on canvas. If you make a mistake, you go over the top of it. You can walk away from it, let it dry, and go back and paint over. I use ink tents with every level of my students. So from the beginner who's never used art products before, because it doesn't matter if you go wrong. You walk away, you go over the top. To my most advanced student, because they can layer it, manipulate it, it's translucent. They can push boundaries with ink tents. Ink Tents is the most diverse art product there is on the market. It's the one product that replicates watercolor to acrylic to oil painting. You can do so much with it. Ink Tents all the way. Quite 
passionate about that one. <laughs> I do love Inktense. I'm going to I'm, add a link to Inktense in the chat for those that are asking. You know, you can use it on fabric and I've used it on canvas. You can just do so much. So it means you don't have to frame your artwork. I mean, there's nothing like that. You always used to have to frame or if you, you had to use acrylics or you had to use oils. But we've now got this product, which means you can use it on a canvas. As long as you've prepared your canvas with gesso or you use a watercolor, specific watercolor canvas, you can now paint on a canvas without having to frame. Framing's not cheap, framing's tricky, and you no longer have to do it. You can use fabric, and you can use t-shirts, you can use Converse shoes, you can do so much. Silk, it behaves beautifully on silk, and you never know what you're going to get on silk. It's the most mesmerizing process ever to do it on silk because it just spreads and it bleeds, but it never goes muddy. And that's what I like about ink tents is it never once goes muddy. Guys, it's Felicia. Judith, is there a way that um, the students can follow you on uh, social media? There is. I've got every social media channel going, I think. <laughs> I have Facebook, which is Judith Seljuk Illustrations. I have Instagram as well, which is Art by Judith. And I have a website as well, which is www.judithseljukillustrations.com. I seen a question asking if you're going to be doing more metallic classes. I always do metallic classes and I do a lot of metallic classes with Derwent actually. Um, it's one of the quite popular ones, especially coming up to Christmas. We do find we do a lot and we do a lot with hand lettering with metallic. So it's definitely watch this space because it's very popular. Hand lettering on black paper with metallics is so easy to do. So I will definitely watch this space and I'll have a word with Grace. <laughs> yep. <laughs> thank you everybody for joining this class and thank you so much to Judith um, for being an amazing instructor. We would love to see your work. Um, so tag her and then also tag us. It's Derwent Art underscore US um, and please share your wonderful paintings. Yes, we love to see what you've done. Absolutely love seeing what you've done. It makes it so worthwhile and it makes it important because we love seeing it. Derwent's about the journey. It's not about the end result. Derwent is about the journey and about the creative process. So we really do love seeing what you create. So please do share it on social media and tag everybody into it. It's one of the most important things to us. Okay, I thank you guys and hope everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye.